obviously throughout these next few days, we're going to be um, covering a lot of the different um, technologies for Earth observation um, and also their applications. But really, this is to give you a bit of background to the wider project that this um, workshop sits under um, and hopefully get you a bit more of an understanding about why we're all here and, and what we're doing. So the Coastal Habitat Mapping Project, it started back in December 2017. Um, it um, has partners within the Falklands, so we've got Falkland Islands Government and the South Georgia Government, um, the Shallow Marine Surveys Group. Um, we've got the JNCC in the UK, hence Guas here. And we have um, Oregon State University, hence Brands here as well. Um, and they've all been leading on different bits of the project. Um, and together we've um, been delivering quite a lot of stuff. And we're due to finish the project um, at the end of this year. Um, it's funded through the Darwin Initiative, um, so granted by UK government, and also we've got um, contributions through the FRG Environmental Studies Budget. Thank you very much. Um, so I guess the key project, back, project background and the key aim we're trying to achieve with the project was to better understand and develop um, an environmental baseline for the Falklands in South Georgia. Um, there is... Well, there has been, I guess, an evidence gap, um, and really before you can understand how to better manage and protect um, the coastal environment, we, we need to have a good handle about what's there. And really this project was setting out, um, developing that initial baseline um, for the coastal margin. It's not really a one-off, it's a, um, and part of the training workshop is to try and um, keep an enduring legacy going. So when the project finishes, um, hopefully some of you um, being led um, by, by governments, for example, um, can take this project forward, um, can be remaking the maps, redoing the maps, um, starting to create a time series which you can then start looking at monitoring and looking at detecting change. So um, I think part of the problem is some of these projects, they, they come here, do their stuff, and then it finishes, and then things tend to go along the same as normal afterwards. So the idea behind getting more training workshops and... Um, getting people more involved and understanding is to try and make sure that doesn't happen and this work can continue into the future. Um, another key thing uh, we were trying to do within the project and it's acknowledging um, some of the challenges around working in remote island territories. Um, when we're looking at satellite imagery, um, we can't start pulling down you know, big data sets uh, from the servers in the Environment Space Agency, European Space Agency, sorry, um, and NASA. So, We've done a lot of work working in the cloud um, using Google Earth Engine, and that's where Brand's been leading on. Um, and that's really using data that's um, in the cloud, doing all your modeling in the cloud, and just pulling down the final products um, at the end. So it's a lot more efficient way of working um, in areas where you're quite limited um, in bandwidth. Um, so I said, obviously, started, well, started summer 2017, it ends this year. Um, we had five key work packages. Um, we were looking at um, georeferencing a lot of 1956 aerial imagery um, for the Falklands. Um, that was captured um, from an aircraft. It was black and white imagery, but it was sitting in the Department, Department of Resources at a set of files. So now that's available um, for stakeholders and end users to use. Um, I guess it's really useful to look back and actually see um, how the environment's changed over, the, over that sort of interim period. Um, the big part of the project, Work Package 2, was developing these broad-scale habitat maps um, using the Google Earth Engine models that Brian will talk about. Um, then we're moving on to the fine-scale modelling. So that's really areas um, of stakeholder interest. Um, and we've developed, or we are developing fine-scale habitat maps using Worldview data. So we've got uh, sponsorship from Digital Globe. Um, so we have complete coverage um, for Worldview for the Falklands and South Georgia at our disposal, and also we go out and um, fly drone missions um, to get high-resolution data in particular areas of interest. Um, work package four is more was all about um, the ongoing planning, protection, and mapping um, and monitoring. So we're developing a coastal monitoring manual, um, which will be available going forward. Um, it'll provide the protocols and the methods that we've used um, that can be used going forwards, um, and also the training workshop where we're here um, this week. And then the final work package is all about um, integrating what we've been doing with existing and emerging initiatives. Um, so earlier, um, it was last year, we did a review of what was happening at the moment in the Falklands and South Georgia. Um, that's on the project website. And there'll be a workshop in November, and the idea behind that is to try and understand and identify how this work can continue into the future. 
So a quick whiz through, this was the aerial imagery, which is now available um, on the Sari WebGIS, on the Coastal Mapping WebGIS, um, all georeferenced, and you can, um, if you want the data, you can either download them, low res, or you can request um, high res images. These are the broad scale maps that have been developed through the project. So this is um, being hosted on the South Georgia government's um, WebGIS. We also have the Falklands being hosted on the Coastal Habitat Mapping WebGIS. We mentioned we had two uh, workshops last year where we got stakeholders around a table and tried to decide where did they want um, you know, that more detailed mapping and modeling to be undertaken. Um, the two reports from those workshops um, are on the website. Um, it was really good. It was, it was a clear steer from where we needed to focus our priorities um, this year. Um, and then we've been out collecting some of the data. So as well as the worldview data that we have through Digital Globe, we've been working with Falklands Conservation, um, mapping the new Port Howard nature area. Um, we've been doing some work with Safe Lane, um, doing some minefield mapping to get a baseline for how um, habitat rest may um, change those environments. And also, obviously, this is coastal, so we've been looking beneath the surface as well, beneath the waves. Um, so we've been doing some side scan sonar mapping around Cushon, Kidney, and um, Port William. Um, this was one of the areas we looked at from a um, South Georgia Gump perspective. Um, this is Bird Island, um, a remarkably rare, clear, and, and unwindy day <laughs> with no cloud at all. Um, and this was the final list that we've um, we reached. Um, so we'll be delivering these and, and hopefully more areas as well. Um, this would be the first start, but um, I'm quite keen that we um, collect, produce as much uh, fine scale mapping and modeling as possible through the project. Um, we're here for the workshop today, and I mentioned we're developing a long term monitoring um, a manual which will cover protocols and methods uh, going forward. And then we've got the review of existing initiatives. Um, so that's been completed, and we've got that project workshop um, coming at the, end, at the end of the year. So that's really a whistle stop tour of the project. Um, now, um, what I did was ask uh, both Ross and Denise to have a think about what it means for them, um, as they're the two sort of government bodies um, that have been partnering on the project from a South Georgia and Falklands perspective. So I will hand over to you guys.